1332, Chapter 2, Set Theory, Section 2, Subsets and Set Operations, Video 9, Multiple Set Operations. You've seen multiple operations before in arithmetic and in algebra. For example, when you've seen, and you've probably seen, and seen them in some goofy Facebook memes, like 95% of people will get this wrong. Five plus three times zero plus one, you know, something like that. <clears throat> it drives me crazy when I see those posts and everybody just believes that the answer is one when it's not. Because if you remember the order of our operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, you know that the multiplication problem happens first. Three times zero is zero, and then you add from left to right to get six. So yeah, those Facebook memes drive me absolutely crazy. But the point I'm trying to make is, when you have multiple operations in an expression, such as arithmetic, uh, there is a set order in which to evaluate the expression. The same thing happens with, um, with multiple set operations. There is a specific order in which to evaluate a, a set expression. And sometimes it's pretty intuitive. Like in these examples, we have the following sets in play, and these are gonna be the same sets we use in all six examples. A universe containing of the whole numbers from 11 through 20, Set A contains 14 through 17. Set B contains the odd numbers in the universe. And set C is just some random collection of numbers, 12, 14, 15, 18, and 20. But some of the set, multiple set operations would pretty, will be pretty easy to figure out the correct order. For example, this first one, you probably know that we're gonna go inside the parentheses first, figure out that, and then go outside and continue. But when we get to some more complicated ones like this one, this one's not too bad. In fact, I'm gonna to go to this one and make a slight change to it just because I wanna. All right, but when you have multiple, multiple operations, both binary and unary and parentheses, you need some sort of guidance on how to approach the problem, uh, some order in which to evaluate them. And so without further ado, I introduce to you the order of set operations. Uh, you need to know what I'm about to type. You need to have it memorized. Order of set operations is pretty straightforward. Starts with parentheses. You see them, you go inside there first. That's what parentheses say. Go inside and do what's inside of here first. Next is complements. Then union and intersection. Now, if you have more than one, they will almost always be uh, established in some order with some existing parentheses, but in the unlikely event that you saw something like A union B intersect C, which is technically ambiguous, you would work the union and intersection from left to right, but very rarely will you see back-to-back -back unions and intersections uh, without some parentheses to dictate an order. But after you do your union inter and intersections, then you do your set difference. You got any minuses, you do those last, unless there are parentheses that trump the order, because that's what parentheses do in these multiple operations. They trump the order that you would normally do them in. All right, so let's take a look at these, starting with number one. Um, let's find A union B in parentheses intersect C. Now, when you are evaluating these expressions, it might be a good idea to mentally or literally write the order in which you're going to do these. Uh, for example, in this expression, the first thing I see are parentheses, so I need to go inside there and make a decision. Well, there's only one thing inside the parentheses, one operation, so we're going to do the union first. The union is the only operation inside the parentheses, so once we finish that, we look outside the parentheses, and the only other operation waiting for us is the intersection. So at some level, you need to determine first and second, third and fourth, however many and then just do them in the order that you see them. All right, let's start with A union B. Well, A union B just means join these two together. Excuse me. So that will be, oh, excuse me, got the hiccups. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna pause the video, get rid of these. All right, I think they're gone. But anyway, union just means join the two sets together. So if we join together A and B, we will get, oops, hold on. 
let's highlight them just so they stand out a little bit. All right, if we form the union of A and B, we will get from least to greatest 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 19. Okay, so now we've got A union B, and now we want to do intersect C. So we've got A union B already, and now the second thing is to intersect it with C. So we want to take our previous answer here and intersect it with C, which is the, over here. So now look at the two things highlighted in green and ask yourself what their intersection is. And remember, the intersection of two sets of the elements that they have in common. What do they have in common? 11, no. 12, no. 13, no. Do they have anything in common? Yes. 14 is in common. It's here and it's here. Uh, 15 is in common. One second. Is 16 in common? No. 17? No. 18? No. 19? Nope. 14 and 15 seems to be the only thing they have in common. So A union B followed by intersect C is just 14 and 15. All right, let's clean this up and let's take a look at the next one. All right, for the next one, we have A union open parentheses B intersect C. And if you notice, this is the exact same order that we had up there. The only difference is the placement of the parentheses. So will it matter? Let's find out. First, let's decide the order in which we're gonna evaluate the expression. We do have parentheses, which is in the top of our order of set operations. So we go inside of here first and decide where to begin. There's only one operation in there, an intersection, so that will happen first. Once that intersection is done, we look outside the parentheses and the only other operation is the union. So we'll do that next, we'll do that second and last. So let's start with B intersect C. For B intersect C, we need to look at sets B and C and ask ourselves, what do you ask when you're looking for an intersection? What do they have in common? Do those two sets have anything in common? Not 11, not 12, not 13, not 14. They do have 15 in common. And that's it. 15 is the only element they have in common. They're almost disjoint. If the intersection were empty, they would be disjoint. So that was our first move. And for our second move, we take the answer to our first move and we union it with A. Now I know it said A union, but union is commutative as is intersection. The only set operation you can't reverse the order of is set difference. All right, so we want B intersect C and we're gonna union that with A. Let's highlight the sets that we need to focus on. So we need to focus on B intersect C, which is what we just found. And we want the union of that with A, which is over here. So we're gonna look at those and we're gonna form their union. Let's see, union means join them together. But if you'll notice, B intersect C contains only 15 and that's already here. So when I put them together, set A is not gonna pick up any additional elements. And our union is 14, 15, 16, and 17. Sometimes that happens, you join two sets together, but one of them is completely contained inside of the other because it's a subset. And therefore, when you join them together, uh, you don't pick up anything new. We could actually make a generalization there, but I'll spare you the details. All right, I'm gonna pause it, move the answer up there, and then we'll go to the next one. All right. For three, we have A intersect B complement. And real quick, I just wanna go grab these order of set operations and bring them over here to the next page so that we can have them as a frame of reference. All right, so, and we have the same sets as before. For A intersect B complement, we need to decide what order we're going to evaluate this in. What are we gonna do first? What are we gonna do second? Well, the order of set operations says go inside of parentheses first, which we don't have. So move to the next one, which is complements, which we do have. 
So this complement is going to happen first. Then a union or intersection, which we do have, that will happen second, and that's the last operation. So first, we need to do B complement. And by the way, you can do some of these without breaking it into so many steps like I'm doing. That's for instructional purposes. If you can look at it and write it out, that's great. But in a multi-step problem like this on a test, you would want to write out as much as you can so that I can give partial credit in case something goes wrong somewhere. Let's start with B complement. I'm saying that as if I'm, as if I'm choosing it. I'm not. It was destined. Complement means everything in the universe that is not in our set. In other words, what is outside of B? Well, let's think about it for a second. The universe is the numbers 11 through 20. Set B is the odd numbers in the universe. So what do you think its complement would be? What type of numbers are not in B? Even numbers. The even numbers between 11 and 20 are 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So that was our first move. Our second move is to find the intersection of A and B complement. So let's highlight the ones that we need to look at. Okay. We want A, which is here, and B complement, which was here. And we want their intersection, meaning what they have in common. So what do these two yellow highlighted sets have in common? 14 and 16, yeah, it looks like it's just those two. We both have 14 and 16, and that's it. We could have equivalently said, well, we know B complement contains the even numbers, so which even numbers are in A? And we get 14 and 16. I didn't say this on, the, on this problem, but with any problem, whether or not I say it, I always invite you to pause the video and try to get the answer, and then come back and see if we get the same answer. Speaking of pausing the video, I'm going to pause it and clean this up, and we'll take a look at the fourth one. I invite you to try to beat me to the answer. All right, let's figure out the order in which to do this. Set difference is last in our order of set operations. However, parentheses is first, meaning that we need to look inside the parentheses and make a decision on where to begin. Well, the only operation in there is the minus, so that's going to happen first. Then outside the parentheses is a complement, so that's going to happen second. It's very important to make sure you set up the order correctly because most people want to go to the complement first because it's on the higher up on the order of set operations, but not as high as parentheses. All right, so we're going to do first, we're going to do the set C minus set A. And let's remember how set difference works. For a set difference, you start by writing the elements of your first set. In this case, that means writing the elements of C. So let's write those. Random collection, 12, 14, 15, 18, and 20. And from that, we're going to cross out anything that belongs to A, since we're doing C minus A. So let's focus on set A. And now go look at our C and ask each element the correct question. And that question is, do you belong to set A? If the answer is yes, we cross you out. All right, so does 12 belong to set A? It is not, we keep it. Does 14 belong to set A? It does, so we cross it out because we are subtracting set A. Does 15 belong to A? It does, and we are removing elements of A, so it's gone. Does 18 belong to set A? It does not. And does 20 belong to set A? It does not. So the only, the only remaining elements after we started with C and took away elements from A were 12, 18, and 20. That is C minus A. Now, what do we do next? Well, our next move, excuse me, our second operation is the complement, but what's the complement in front of? A complement, a complement sign belongs to the thing immediately to the left of it. So it belongs to that parentheses, but every parentheses has a partner and usually some contents. So we want the complement 
of C minus A. Well, we just found the answer to C minus A. The answer to C minus A is right here. And we want the complement of that, which means we want everything in the universe that is not in C minus A. So now we just have to ask ourselves, universe, what am I going to lose? Well, for the complement of 12, 18, and 20, we just remove 12, 18, and 20 from the universe. Since the universe goes from 11 through 20, we'll start with 11 and not write a number if it's in C minus A. So the first number we're not gonna write is 12. So we'll skip that, go to 13. Next number we're gonna skip is 18. <coughs> Again, 18 is in C minus A. So we don't write it for the complement of C minus A. And then uh, we keep 19, but 20 is in C minus A. And since we're doing the complement, we want the numbers outside of C minus A. And there's our answer to the complement of C minus A. This is just like most arithmetic problems. Find the correct order, do one step at a time. Make sure you understand what each step is. Let's clean this up and then we'll take a look at the last two. All right, business is about to pick up. Same sets as before, same universe, same A, B, and C. Same set, uh, order of set operations. Give me one second to make those appear. All right. And uh, let's figure out what we got to do first. So what, let's take inventory here. We've got a set of parentheses, which isn't a move to do. It just focuses us somewhere. We have three complements and two unions. Three complements, two unions means we've got five operations to calculate. So we might want to know the correct order in which to do them. Do we have parentheses? Of course we do. But unlike the previous parentheses, there is more than one operation on the inside, which means now within the parentheses, I need to decide who's going to be first and who's going to be second. So in the parentheses, I have a complement and a union. Which one takes precedence? Answer, complement comes before union. So within the parentheses, we must do the complement first. And so this guy is going to be first. But that doesn't complete the parentheses. We have to do that union second. Okay. That will complete the parentheses, but we still got three other operations to look at. This complement, this union, and this complement. So now that we're outside and done with the parentheses, who takes precedence? Well, we're done with parentheses, so next is complements. We have two of them. All right, so when you have two complements, which order do you do them in? Doesn't really matter. We'll just do them left to right. So we'll do that complement third and this complement fourth. And then the only operation left is that union, and that will be fifth. Invest some time up front deciding how you're going to attack this problem. If you, if you just attack it head on, good luck. All right, so what are we doing first? The first thing we're doing is the complement on the A. That complement belongs to the A. So let's figure out A complement. I remember what complement means. It means take everything in the universe that is not in that set. Well, the universe is 11 through 20, and A contains 14 through 17. So I'm going to start writing the universe, but I'm going to stop whenever I get to an element of A. 11, 12, 13, here come the A elements. No 14, no 15, no 16, no 17, 18, 19, and 20. So there's a complement. And where do we go next? We've already decided that. The second thing that we're going to do is that union. And on the left of the union is a complement. On the right of it is B. So now we need to find the union of these two sets. A complement is what we just found. B is here. And we want to form their union. So what do we get? Well, union just means join together. So let's go one at a time, 11 through 20, and see if anybody's got it. 11, yes, they both have it. 12, yes, A complement has it. 13, yes, they both have it. 14, neither set has 14. 15, yes, B has it. 16, no, neither set has it. 
17, 18, 19, and 20 are all accounted for. 17, 18, they both have 19 and 20. So I do pick up the rest of them, starting with 17. Remember, union is like dumping two ramen, ramen noodle packet, flavoring packets together, and everything joins together. All right, we did the second move, and now let's move to the third move. The third move is this complement. But what does that complement belong to? A complement belongs to the thing immediately to the left of it, which is that closed parentheses. But a closed parentheses has an open parentheses partner and contents. In this case, the contents are A complement union B. So we're going to do the complement of the previous answer. The previous answer was here. And now we want the complement of it. Remember, the complement means everything in the universe that is not in that set. The universe is 11 through 20. So the complement of the previous step will be all the numbers that are missing between 11 and 20. So let's just look right here, start counting. And if we don't see a number, write it down. 11, 12, 13, 14 is missing. 15, 16 is missing. 17, 18, 19, 14 and 16 are the only two missing numbers. So A complement union, B complement, complement, it's just 14 and 16. I'm going to pause the video and clean some of this up and then we'll continue. All right, for our fourth step, we are doing another complement, but this time the complement is on the C and that's going to be pretty easy to decipher. We just have to look at the universe and look at set C and ask set C, who are you missing from the universe? Remember, the universe is 11 through 20. So in the blue highlighted set, which numbers are missing? 11 is missing, 12 isn't, 13 is missing, 14 and 15 are, aren't missing, 16 and 17 are missing, 18 is not missing, 19 is missing, 20 is not missing. The numbers in the universe that are not in C are 11, 13, 16, 17, and 19. Okay, that one wasn't too bad. And now fifth. We need to take the union of the thing to the left is A complement union B complement, and the thing to the right is C complement. But more importantly, where are these sets that we are forming the union of? Answer. Well, the thing to the left of the union sign is the answer to the A complement union B complement. In other words, the thing to the left is that, which is this step which is that set. So there's one of the things we're taking the union of. The thing on the right side of our last union is C complement, but that's what we figured out in the last line. So it's this one. And so to finish this, all we have to do is join these together in a union of two sets. So let's just start counting 11 through 20. If we see the number, write it down. 11, no 12, 13, 14, it's right there. No 15, 16, 17, no 18, 19, 20. And that would be our final answer. Yeah, I know this one took a lot longer, but it had five operations. So it required five steps. Each individual step is easy. You just ask yourself two questions. What am I going to do? What am I going to do it to? Do it and then move on to the next step. All right, question. How many steps will this one take? The answer, three. If you said four because of the parentheses, the parentheses are not a step. The parentheses direct you to a different place in the problem. I'm not gonna go back and copy the order of set operations because you need to learn them. You should know that parentheses are first. And in this case, there's only one thing, one operation inside the parentheses that will be first. And then outside the parentheses, we have a complement and a set difference. Set difference is on the bottom of the list, so complement is going to take precedence over it. So the complement will be second, and then that set difference there will be third and last. So this one will only take three steps. As usual, I invite you to pause the video, which I imagine has gone on for a long time already, and uh, see if you can beat me to the answer. For first, we're just going to do A minus C. For the sake of brevity, let's just do it. We start with set A, which is 14, 15, 16, and 17. Then we cross from it anything that belongs to C. 
Uh, C contains 12, which is not there, but 14 is there, and so is 15. Uh, C does not contain 16 or 17, and so A minus C is 16 comma 17. Our second step is easy. It's a complement of B. All we have to do is look at set B and ask it what it's missing from this universe. Just remember this universe is 11 through 20. Well, B contains the odd numbers, so it's the even numbers. 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And then for our third and final step, we're doing the set difference. On the left is B complement, on the right is A minus C in parentheses. And this is where you might wanna slow down because the order does matter. We need to start with the first set, so we need to start with this one. So let's start by writing that down. Actually, you know what? It's already up there. There's no need for me to write it down, but let's do what we're gonna do to it. What are we gonna do to it? We are going to remove anything that belongs to the thing after the subtraction. Well, A minus C is what we calculated in the first step. So what we need to do is look at the yellow numbers and cross out any of them that are, that are highlighted in green over here. So let's see who to cross out. We're only gonna cross out 16 and 17 and 16 is the only number in that set to cross out, which means we're done. Our final answer is 12, 14, 18, and 20. Not all of these set operation problems take a long time. They just take a while to explain in detail, but hopefully we've done enough examples that you've got a good footing. But of course, you can always reach out to me if you have any questions or need some more help. Come on video, pause or end, thank you.